The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Candidate with eyes on Maryland's soon to be open Senate seat. Plus, a new measure aimed at keeping kids more safe in schools. The new technology in Northern Virginia School District is planning to put in place. And we are seeing some peaks of sunshine across the DMV, but we are tracking a few spotty showers heading through the afternoon, so definitely keep it here. A check of that forecast is coming up. Good afternoon, I'm Randy Bass in for Mark Hall. Thanks for joining us for your news at noon. Right now we start with brand new photos from a shocking attack on a Prince George's County school bus. Take a look. These are the suspects police say targeted and tried to shoot a student at a school bus stop in Oxon Hill Monday afternoon. The three suspects jumped on and tried to shoot a boy on board several times, but the gun jammed and didn't fire. According to the union representing county bus drivers, the incident brings a greater concern for safety. The first thought that came to my mind is basically safety across the county. We want to make sure that not just students, but also staff are kept safe in their work location. We don't want the, we don't want the schoolyard to end up being the graveyard. The bus driver and bus aide who were there at the time are currently taking time off. They say they are afraid to return to work after what happened. And sheriff's deputies in Frederick County say a teenager jumped onto a crowded school bus earlier this morning near Middletown, and they pulled out two large knives. The 15-year-old then got off the bus at Middletown High School and walked away. No one was hurt, and deputies were able to track him down shortly after. Deputies also confirming this same teen was reported missing out of Pennsylvania. At this time, several schools in that area remain on a secure status. We'll bring you additional updates both on air and online from DC News Now. I'm David Trone, and I'm running for the Senate because the clock is ticking. DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Maryland Congressman David Trone joining the race for current Senator Ben Cardin's seat when he retires in 2024. Trone was first elected to the House back in 2018. He represents Maryland's sixth district in Congress that includes parts of Frederick and Washington counties, along with all of Western Maryland. He joins Montgomery County Council member Will Jawando in what is expected to be a crowded Democratic field for that Senate seat. Terrio and three other members were convicted today in their plot to attack on January 6th. Terrio was found guilty of seditious conspiracy. He the judge heard from dozens of witnesses over more than three months. The charge carries a prison sentence of up to 20 years. And also developing now, the man police say is responsible for a mass shooting in Atlanta is behind bars. Investigators say 24-year-old Dion Patterson shot five women inside a waiting room at a medical center yesterday. One of those victims died. Police say Patterson took off in a car he found nearby. Investigators say license plate readers help track them down hours later. Now Atlanta's mayor is calling for gun control. We need to do everything we can, we can to ensure that folks who shouldn't have guns can't get them. There's a lot of talk about Second Amendment rights. We need more actions about the rights of our citizens to go about their lives, to be able to go to a doctor's office. Now, according to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been nearly 200 mass shootings in the U.S. this year alone. And this afternoon, we're learning more about what's next for a man accused of shooting a YouTube prankster at Dulles Town Center last month. Prosecutors now say any charges filed will go to a grand jury. The 21-year-old was shot while filming a video for his comedy-style prank channel. His name is Tanner Cook. The accused shooter, Alan Coley, is now facing several charges, including the use of a firearm in a felony. If convicted, he faces up to life in prison. And the U.S. Labor Department is fining four different McDonald's franchises more than $200,000 for child labor violations. One of those franchises had locations in Maryland. The Labor Department says those franchise owners allowed 14 and 15 year olds to work more hours than the law allows. The agency says it also found more than 300 children working for little or no pay at a McDonald's location in Kentucky. In some instances, they say children were as young as 10, working until 2 a.m. In Montgomery County, two parents are being charged with the murder of their child and the neglect of six other children in their care. This stems from the death of a 17-year-old girl about a year ago. Officers were called to Quill Place in Montgomery Village, 
where the daughter of Dominique and Cynthia Moore was found dead. Police say unsanitary living conditions led the Moore's six other children to be removed from the home and placed in child protective services. An autopsy was conducted on the 17-year-old. Her death was ruled a homicide. And two people were sent to the hospital after a fire broke out at the Alexander House Apartments in Silver Spring last night. Officials say one of the victims suffered burns. The other, they say, had an unknown medical emergency. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. And this afternoon, police warning people about a black bear roaming the Rockville area. The animal has been spotted several times recently. Just yesterday, it was seen in the Woodley Gardens neighborhood and again near Julius West Middle School. Police are in contact with animal control and the Department of Natural Resources. If you see a bear, you are asked to call police. But if you do come across one of these guys in your yard, the National Park Service is breaking down how you can stay safe. To start, stay calm. Even if you may not feel calm, surprising a bear is one of the worst things you can do. So no loud noises or sudden movements. Instead, speak calmly in low tones. That allows the bear to recognize that you are not a threat. Most bears don't want to attack you, but startling the animal could trigger an attack. Taking a live look now over Hagerstown, Maryland. The sun is back poking through some of those clouds. Let's head over to our weather forecaster, Brittany Ward, for the latest this afternoon. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Randy. How are you today? I'm good. You know, haven't seen any bears, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And you know what? It is Friday Eve, and it's shaping out to be a very nice, mild day out there. We had some peaks of sunshine, but we are starting to see more clouds begin to roll their way into our area. And then we're also tracking a few showers hours as we head into the second half of your afternoon. So take a look at satellite and radar showing you the first half of your morning. We had some showers just off to the west in those mountain counties. Now we're basically staying dry across much of the DMV, starting to see a few more clouds begin to funnel in here in the district. And it's all thanks to that pesky low that is just off to our east. It's going to continue to slip off as we head through your day today. And then we have high pressure just off to the south. That's going to be giving us some clear conditions as we head through your Friday. So we just have to get through today first. Maybe pack the jacket on hand. Not going to be a complete washout though as we head through your Thursday. Temperature wise fairly warm across the DC metro area. We're talking about uh, 58 here in the nation's capital. 57 though as you head over there to Hagerstown and Frederick. Then get into the mountain counties where we saw that rain falling a little bit cooler only holding on to the lower 50s. Now overall high today they will be getting into the 60s so yet another mild day we just got a few showers we got to deal with as we head through the second half of your afternoon so planning it by uh, one o'clock today still going to be holding on to the clouds temperatures start to warm back up mainly into the upper 50s holding on to the upper 50s by two that's when we could see a spot shower though here in the nation's capital and then we finally get into the 60s as we head into that three o'clock hour but randy we got 80s to talk about in that seven day forecast so definitely keep it here we'll talk about that guys in just a bit all right, Brittany, thanks. We'll be sure to check back in with you later on this hour. Weapons detectors will soon be placed at every public middle and high school in Prince William County, Virginia. The board just voted last night to approve the final push for the project. Our Tosin Fakile has the latest. Probably any time after the summer, and that is because the school board says it'll take effect in the 2023 2024 school year. And that vote by the Prince William County School Board was a unanimous one. So take a look at your screen right now. This is what that evolved weapons detector looks like. The video you're looking at is from a demonstration at a school in the county. The school board says the evolved evolve weapons detectors will be at the entrances of the 34 middle and high schools and non-traditional schools. Officials say the device is very advanced. More than a metal detector, it scans through clothes and backpacks and is designed to detect things like guns, knives, and bombs, not things like laptops. Now, a former student says he fully supports the detectors and adds it should not change the atmosphere at schools. Same thing as if you go through TSA. You go through, you put your things in the bag, you go through. I went to the Nationals game, same thing, put your pockets there. So when we try to make that argument that it's going to be a prison, that, that's an invalid argument because do you feel like you're going through a prison when you have to go through TSA, you know? So that's that's the same thing and that's how I think about it. Now the project has a hefty price tag of $10.7 million over four years, but the support for these detectors in schools is just as heavy. 
Up next, considering similar protective steps are Fredericksburg City Schools and Fairfax County Schools. We're in Prince Williams County. I'm Tosin Fakile for DC News Now. All right, staying in Northern Virginia this afternoon, Alexandria City Public Schools is getting new leadership. The city school board says they will be naming a new permanent superintendent at 630 tonight. Officials will make that announcement at the board meeting. And the Virginia High School League approved new guidelines for high school athletes planning to make money off of their name, image, or likeness. The guidelines do not dictate if an athlete can make money. Instead, they work to teach student athletes the best ways they can profit off themselves. The league's executive director said this matches other areas nearby like Maryland and D.C. Here are some of the biggest points from those new guidelines. Schools will not be allowed to use NIL to recruit or enroll students. Athletes will not be allowed to receive gifts or compensation for using VHSL property. That includes the school's name, uniform, mascot, or logo. Additionally, no person affiliated with the school is allowed to negotiate an NIL deal for the athlete. That rule does not apply if the person working with the school is the parent of that student athlete. Students must notify the principal or athletic director within three days of signing an NIL contract. 26 states have similar policies for high school student athletes. That policy takes effect in July. And new this afternoon, some Virginians will be getting money in the mail. Virginia Attorney General Jason Miares just announced an upcoming payout from a TurboTax settlement. TurboTax's owner, Inuit, will pay out over $140 million to consumers who were tricked into paying for free tax services. According to the Attorney General, around 120,000 Virginians are impacted by this. He says those consumers are expected to get about $30 each.